it is well known now that the mainstream media and social media sites have a definition of anti-Semitism, which involves much more than hating people simply for being Jewish. If that were the only definition of anti-Semitism, that would be logical. Anyone who hates people simply because they're Jewish or, or any other race or ethnicity, or anyone who considers their own race or ethnicity as superior to others, is surely wicked and a partial respecter of persons. Yet the group of people controlling the mainstream media, social media, Hollywood, the pharmaceutical industry, the Federal Reserve banking system, and perpetrating a modern day genocide in Gaza before the world this very day does not like being exposed and called out, like those who would be just and impartial ought to do. Therefore, this group commonly resorts to a definition of anti-Semitism, which goes well beyond the basic obvious one, and instead involves categorizing anyone as anti-Semitic who would dare state the obvious about the corruption and, a, and unlawful power involving the Jewish collective and the modern nation of Israel. Simply speaking the truth about this and being in their bad graces is now considered anti-Semitism. Yielding to the unrighteous pressure involved in this misleading definition will cost you your soul. How bad is it now? Consider the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023, which passed in the U.S. House of Representatives on May 1st, 2024, with 320 voting in favor of it and only 91 voting against it. And if you think those were mostly Republicans voting against it, you're wrong. Only 21 of the 91 opposed were Republicans. That's not saying Republicans are, um, are worse than the Democrats overall, but this is very disturbing and proof that the Republicans are also exceedingly corrupt. Here is the summary of Bill H.R. 6090. This bill provides statutory authority for the requirement that the Department of Education's Office for Civil, for Civil Rights take into consideration the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's working definition of anti-Semitism when reviewing or, or investigating complaints of discrimination based on race, color, or national origin and programs or activities that receive federal financial assistance. This working definition is right on the IHRA's website. Here is just one of its listed contemporary illustrations of alleged anti-Semitism from the IHRA's website, using the symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism in parentheses, e.g. claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to, continue to characterize Israel or Israelis. And if you think that this exaggerated definition and the pressure involved in that has begun there or will end there, you are greatly mistaken. The Bible gives many cautions about yielding to the pressure of unrighteous Jews and gives several examples of how yielding to this pressure was a key factor in many losing their souls and sealing their eternal perdition. It also gives several warnings to people to not let this happen. Jeremiah 117, God says to Jeremiah, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and, and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Jeremiah was an Israelite sent to the Jews. Ezekiel was too. Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spoke unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear, or whether they will, or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. 
But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth, and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me. And lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me. And it was written within and, and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. The fear of man bringeth a snare. That includes fear of any person or group, including those whom one naturally sees as their own people, people who are powerful, and people whom there is pressure not to ever criticize, no matter how just and accurate the criticism. Malachi was also sent to Israel. Malachi 3.15 says, And now we call the proud happy. Yes, they that work wickedness are set up. Yes, they that tempt God are even delivered. Those who really want to truly fear God and be spared from his wrath can't be partial. They have to label wickedness for what it is. They have to call those who work wickedness in God's eyes cursed and miserable instead of happy and blessed. And they have to do what is in their power to bring criminals to justice, no matter who they are. Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 to 18 then says, then they that fear the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth, that serveth him. Then shall ye return, and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Yet many don't take heed. Here are some of a multitude of examples of these from Scripture. Mark chapter 15, verses 11 to 15. But the chief priest moved the people, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then shall I, I do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus, when he had scourged him, to be crucified. Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Now about that time here the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. This was one of many actions over an evil course which ruined Herod. Look what evil course, look what that evil course involved though. Herod would die and be sent to hell by the time Acts chapter 12 closes. Felix, the Roman governor, also chose an evil course, which was highlighted by an evil desire to please the same people whom Herod sinfully loved to please. Acts chapter 24, verses 24 to 27. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he, Paul, reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, I know Paul was no easy grace preacher like most now who claim to preach the gospel like he did. Continuing, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. But after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 to 13. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For, nine, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. This applies just as much to the Judaizers today. It is obvious which camp these in Galatians and the modern Judaizers are trying to please. Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. Speaking of the same people just spoken of in Galatians chapter 6, trying to please the same camp. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To, to write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. And Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1-3 to say, 
But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through, covet through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. That includes the Zionist preachers who exalt modern Israel as it unrighteously oppresses and commits a genocide against the Palestinians. That includes all preachers who are afraid of offending the Jews and afraid of offending professing Christians who are partial towards them. And it also includes those who back down from truth because they are afraid of sounding anti-Semitic. Here are some examples of people who got it right. Follow them instead. Luke chapter 3 verses 7 to 9, John the Baptist then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. My note, the modern Zionist Christians say that Jews are in covenant with God because they have Abraham as their father. The faithful men of Scripture said otherwise. Abraham is their natural father, of course. John the Baptist continues, For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 to 54. This is Stephen before the Sanhedrin, the most powerful Jews of his time. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers, who received the law by the, disposi by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 12 to 14. The writer of Hebrews is exhorting Jewish Christians about the need to spiritually separate from their own natural people. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no, no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Salvation is of the Jews, because salvation is in the Jewish Messiah. It makes perfect sense that those of that people who do not obey his gospel would be prime candidates to be the most dangerous people in both the natural and the spiritual realms. The Apostle Paul's life is proof of that. From the perspective of his deeds as a persecutor before his road to Damascus experience, and from the perspective of the events in his life after that point, consider which group indisputably gave him the most trouble then. He thus wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, For ye, brethren, speaking to the Thessalonian Christians, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea, in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Are those words written by a natural Jew, by the way, anti-Semitism? According to the mainstream media, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and the majority of the U.S. House of Representatives in 2024, they are. Anyone who would be faithful to the Lord must be prepared to be labeled an anti-Semite then and not back down when they are called one for echoing what the Bible says, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death.